my name is Ario. I am the co-founder of Versus Games, working on Potionomics. So Ario, talk about what this game's all about, Potionomics. It's a really cute, like, potion business management sim. Yeah, so you, pl you play as Sylvia, who has recently, through a set of circumstances leading to her uncle's death, uh, has obtained a potion shop that is currently under a lot of debt. And Sylvia has to use her, essentially her potion making skills and her business acumen to run a potion shop uh, and brew potions and sell to customers in the hopes to revitalize the shop. So the first thing that I want to get out of the way is the art style is absolutely adorable and so unique for your game. Uh, you have like different, you have several different versions of characters. It seems like like top down, mini versions of characters, talking characters. Like you have so many different art assets. What were some of the challenges and what were the, some of the inspirations when creating this art style? I think the challenges of the game. Well, we kind of wanted to have it be like a shop simulator game, and a lot of shop simulator games generally have sort of this top-down view where you can see this the shop as it burgeons and as it, as it grows. And so that was really important to us. Um, but we also wanted to emphasize sort of what it's like to be a shopkeeper at a more conversational level. Like what is it like to haggle with customers and, and you know, do business with them at a more personal level. So it was really important for us to then also capture sort of that element. And so that's why we have these chibi versions of Sylvia in the shop, you know, as you can see her trying to running things in there. And then when you go into the nitty gritty of selling the potions and you see this, uh, you know, Sylvia in sort of full view, talking to customers and other uh, potential vendors and all that. What were some of the inspirations when developing uh, Potionomics and what have been some of your favorite parts to work on personally? So the biggest inspiration to the game was a game called Reketeer, as many people probably can guess from just looking at the game. Uh, I played Reketeer many, many years ago and was just super in love with the idea of, of, of you know, just running a shop and, and it's actually more about like the haggling perspective of it. And I felt like that was such an interesting way of having a conflict or having this sort of interesting sort of problem without necessarily having it be sort of combat focused, even though there is sort of combat in that game, but I, I specifically the haggling. Um, and I kind of wanted to explore that further. Um, and so Potion sort of came from there. And then at the same time, you know, I've always been into the idea of magic and witches and fantasy. Uh, my One of the my favorite shows is Little Witch Academia, which um, really kind of inspired a lot of the initial sort of um, way that we describe the magical world in Potionomics. But then as over the six years of development, we sort of mold that into our own sort of flavor of it. So you talk about the different types of potions players can brew in your game and what are some of your personal favorites? Hmm, good question. I think, you know, the health potion is probably tried and true. You know, it's uh, the most iconic. And I, I, I do, and it's sort of like I've been staring at the Hell Potion for so long it was the first potion we ever made for the game. It was like sort of like the progenitor of all the potions in the game. But I think uh, my favorite has to be the Sight Potion because it has this really like big eyeball on it, and it just like so clearly defines just like looking, like being able to like find ingredients, uh, like helping your heroes find ingredients a lot easier by enhancing their sight. And so just having that big eyeball on that on that bad boy is just so fun for me. You know, like, again, your characters in this game are so expressive, especially at the ground level. Like, what went into animating them to make them so, like, visually appealing and just very super expressive? So, a lot of my, um, where I kind of come from in terms of my background and friends and colleagues are kind of more in the animation sphere. And so, our characters sort of, or the way that the game sort of ended up being the way it was, was I basically just brought in some of my friends who I thought were really great developers and really great people to work with. And a lot of them just had a really great animation background. And so it was sort of like, well, what can we do with our skill set that for a game, especially on the ground level, when we didn't know what push was, you know, what, what skills could we utilize? And we kind of just brought their skill set to the fore. And sort of the game sort of organically came from there, like how expressive all the characters are, how much effort we put into it. Every character has their own custom rigs and animations that's, that's specific to each character. Uh, they're all handcrafted for, for whatever peculiar personality they have. And we really delve deep into everyone's personality, how they're different from each other and how they interact with each other. We really kind of treated it like it was like 
an animated TV show um, when we design the characters. No, it, def it definitely shows and stands out. Like their animations are expressive and, and like really, really high high level for a small indie game. You know, like it's not something you usually see. You usually see super stylized graphics, like maybe some pixel art or maybe some standard still images, but she full on moves, her eyes get wide, get small. Like the way she does her mannerisms, like everything looks super detailed. And that's all because of your animation background, I'm guessing, right? Like you just said. Right, I think that's, well, predominantly our team as a whole sort of has touched a little bit of everything. But yeah, it's like coming into Potionomics, that was kind of our skill set. And we kind of just like, well, that's all we know what to do, so let's just do that. That's so not only is your game like a management sim, but you also have a deck building aspect to it as well. Can you talk about that and then maybe elaborate more on the RPG elements of your game? So the, the deck building mechanics actually came a bit later when we were trying to figure out what was the best way to represent haggling. Um, there were a lot of different things that we sort of explored. It could have been a turn-based sort of traditional sort of combat style, like Final Fantasy, the old school, not, you know, not, not the future, not the Final Fantasy 16 version of that, but, um, or perhaps, you know, maybe something that's more maybe dice or related or something like that, something different. But what ended up really speaking to me was sort of like when you're haggling with someone, when, just like how we're having this conversation right now, you know, different ideas and thoughts come in about how to express certain things and the way that you like and haggle techniques sort of are learned like you kind of learn to to maneuver and, and finagle conversations and so cards and a deck so a cards being sort of the ideas that you have at the time to haggle with or so sort of the, the thoughts or the topics i would say um represent that and in your deck is sort of like your income is your entire knowledge base of all the haggling techniques you have and it sort of felt the most organic, the most closest to what it felt like to actually haggle with someone or, you know, have a conversation with someone in real life. Um, so the RPG aspect of the game, though, uh, for, you know, with like the, the shop being almost a character of itself, leveling up with you as you haggle with customers, getting those funds, investing those funds into your shop, your shop grows. But as a character, Sylvia has all these vendor care, all these vendors in the world that are like Sylvia, who are also shopkeepers as well, who are part of the ecosystem that you will get to know uh, as Sylvia. And through those conversations, through hanging out with them, through uh, uh, having just overall conversations, your relationship will grow with those characters. And as your relationship grows, um, they might throw you some bones in terms of having techniques. And so over the course of the game, as you get to know these characters, you'll be able to obtain new cards for your deck that you can build and construct your haggling techniques from the plethora of different. And each character has their own style, right? So some characters might be kind to customers. Some people might play hardball. Some folks might uh, more focus on your internal sort of um, stress levels and trying to manage that as you, as you deal with the plethora of annoying customers that might come your way. And so, uh, each one of those is an ars it will become a little piece of your arsenal when it comes to selling your products. I feel like you're you're part uh, you know a business management sim, part RPG, part deck builder, but I also feel like there's a little dating sim in there as well. Like you don't date anyone in this, but I feel like a lot of the ideas could be lent very well. Like you probably could you add like a dating implement into this game if you really wanted to or had the time. So there's actually just full on dating. Oh, there is. Okay, I didn't know. It's that. not even. It's not even like we want to. There, it's just in there. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, as you uh, get to know the plethora of characters in the world, um, you'll have the opportunity to potentially introduce some romance into your relationship. Uh, but it's up to you as a player, and it's up to you to decide who you would like, or as as Sylvia to, um, but, you know, investigate with, <laughs> so to speak. Now, how do you balance all those different mechanics, you know, between the sim, the shop simulator, the RPG, the deck building, and the dating mechanics, as well as the individual characters? Like, how do you tackle, because that's a lot of mechanics, a lot of story, and a lot of characters in your game. How did you tackle these uh, subsystems? Like, one at a time? Did you slowly add more? Did you always knew you wanted all these subsystems in when you started production? So, I know a lot of folks, especially outside looking in, see all these things as subsystems of this sort of overarching, you know, as part of different parts of the game. But when we were developing functionomics, what we really just wanted to do was represent the, the the hurdles of a shopkeeper as much as we could. And running a shop is 
sort of difficult and topsy turvy business. You know, there's a lot of things you have to, a lot of hats you have to、uh, wear when you're a shopkeeper and you're running any business. And so, what better way to represent the idea of holding, of having only so many hats than having a lot of different mechanics that work sort of independently from each other, but also are kind of interconnected in the way that it and、uh, You know, pushes your business forward, gets、uh, obtains. You know, where so we can earn funds. All these, all these things sort of eventually cobble together into what we feel like is the full experience of postmodernics. You know, it's really interesting that you have this interesting. I, I, don't, I don't want to call it combat, but this segment where after you sell the potions, your、uh, your customer goes on like a dungeon crawl, and you can actually follow her on this little timeline, hit hit objectives, and 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 find enemies, and then use your potions that you、uh, that you sold her. Can you talk about that subsystem? Because I think it's such an interesting concept of watching another player go through a dungeon essentially via timeline instead of you actually going yourself, like in like say like in Moonlighter. Right, so we really wanted to just focus on, again, the shop. You know, the, the running of a shop. You know, usually、uh, when you're a business owner or shopkeeper, you're usually not, not going out and getting a lot of those stuff. You could, like in Moonlighter, which is an excellent game in itself.、Um, but we really wanted to make it feel like that you're that you are essentially the NPC character. You are sending heroes out on adventures. You're you're the one that's getting the like what, what when when they bring it back the wolf pelts, the twelve wolf pelts you need to get. What are you going to do with those wolf pelts, right? What, how do you then transfer that, translate that into your business, right? And so you have characters like Mint, who is a, a adventure character you will meet in your as in, as the game progresses, and you're able to send heroes like Mint、uh, on adventures. And when you're at、uh, planning and seeing all the the characters like tap, you know, Mint going through and fighting all those monsters, you're basically planning with Mint. You're basically figuring out like, okay, this is probably the monsters we're going to face. And these are probably the potions that we're going to need, right? And so, not only are you able to sell your potions, but you also need to strategize your your production. Like, okay, what can I do to support all these heroes on their adventures as they then are able to bring back better loot that could build, make better potions, and then continue to make the potion shop thrive. I'm guessing if the customer dies or fails, that they come back to your store and yell at you sometimes. Well, our game is kind of kosher, so they don't really die. They just kind of like, okay, we're gonna stop it here. You know, I ran out of health potions. I'm outy. You know, I'm gonna fight that mob another day. You know, no need to, no need to chew too much that I can't, we can't do. But、um, basically, I mean, every every adventure that you go on is a success. It's just how much of a success、uh, is is it really? You know, but so and that really kind of depends on on you as a player and Sylvia making those potions for those heroes. You talk about、uh, all the different regions and ingredients that are in your game, and how、um, some of the challenges of creating all these different potions and figuring out all these different, basically, recipes that they have to make for the potions. Like, walk us through that creative process. That must have been fun and very challenging. It was、um, originally, you know, the idea was to have a certain limited amount of potions, or at least, perhaps maybe the, the, the saying is more like, we didn't really know what potions. To have in the game, or how many we wanted to make, but we did know that it's really cool for not only as a player to have a lot of options and to strategize、um, all the different potions you can make, but it's just cool to be a witch, a witch making a ton of cool potions, right? And so we sort of decided that we wanted to add as many as we could to to sort of, and so now we have up to twenty potions you can make with all different lines of. Their improvement, like different levels of you know tiers, from, yeah, the tiers, yeah, exactly, like minors to minor potions to grand and more powerful、uh, with more powerful effects.、Um, and with accompanying all those potions, we have you know over two hundred ingredients that you will be able to find a lot in your journey. All serves trying to just make you feel like you're constantly exploring, finding new ingredients that provide new interesting challenges in your potion brewing. That.、Um, We just have to strategize and and, and roll. Some of those ingredients、um, come from.、Uh, I mean, a lot of those ingredients have a lot of different effects, right? And as a player, you're going to have to. Some ingredients are not all just good. You know, some ingredients might come with some peculiarly bad traits, like maybe smell bad, taste bad, that you're going to have to maneuver around as a player in, in terms of building. So maybe they're great for like. Injecting a lot of that medicinal quality to your potion, but maybe player, you know, the customers will want to drink that, and so you're going to have to figure out if there's a way to balance that. Maybe applying, some, you know, maybe putting an ingredient that has some good flavor, maybe to neutralize it. Maybe you might want to obscure somehow 
perhaps through some techniques and haggling, the fact that your potion may not necessarily taste that good, um, and perhaps uh, sell the potion that way. It's all up to you as a player. So what consoles, what platforms are you aiming for at launch? And do you have a release date for your game yet? So our game is PC. That's what we're targeting first. And we are launching this fall. You know, and, and I'd be remiss if I didn't ask that because, you know, this game uh, would work pretty well on Nintendo Switch, a little nice sim game. You can use the touchscreen functionality on the Switch as well. Any plans for Nintendo Switch release? As of right now, it's PC. You're just, you're just gonna have to hope and pray. Where can people go to support your game, find out more information and just keep up, keep updated on it? Right now you can go and check our game out on Twitter at Potionomics. Same thing on TikTok at Potionomics as well. You can also go just wish us our game on Steam. Your wish listing helps tremendously. I don't think I don't think a lot of gamers understand that just simply wish listing a game helps out the dev tremendously. Like it's a big deal. So wish list it, please. Yes, absolutely. Wish listing is the best thing you can do as, as a player. It tells us us and Steam that you want the game, you want the game to be out there, and it's much appreciated. And I, I just have to I can't I can't I mean the game is really gorgeous. Uh Ario, it's great. Like it looks, I mean, I cannot get over how just crisp and clean and expression full all these characters are. They're super animated. They're, they're, they look gorgeous. Like I just can't get over how this does not look like an indie game. This looks like a triple A title just based on the, the models and the art alone. I it just, it's so incredible to me. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's, that's, we, you know, that's, that's, uh, six years of, uh, <laughs> right there. It's, you know, it's, um, thank you so much. That's, I really appreciate that. Do you, I mean, go ahead. I just because just I have to ask, do you have any favorite like animes that you harken back to that inspire you when making games like this and designing characters? I see a Capsule Corp hat you're wearing. I mean, Dragon Ball Z is probably the classic, one of the classic animes. Yeah, I mean, I'm super into I mean, since like, you know, as a kid, I, I, I super enjoyed an watching anime. Uh, I would say Little Witch Academia is probably the main source of inspiration for for our potion eyes. You know, we, we, you know, I would rewatch episodes over and over and over and just like, pick apart the world building and how they, you know, and I really love how Little Witch Academia sort of like molded sort of like this sort of witch fantasy world, like you can take from like Harry Potter and stuff, but then like just insert it into like game mechanics. Like they literally put game mechanics into their show um, just for like how things work. And I thought that was really cool. I, I like seeing that intersection. Um, but you know, when it comes to just anime, yeah, I guess like that's, that's I, I can't even think of any other anime that's really specifically what you I think about. I think that works. There's a like, lot. I mean, there's a lot of fantasy. I mean, oh yeah, actually, one right, of the right. popular ones that I used to watch as a kid was the uh, the one with the um his brother was like a in like a suit of armor. I forget what it was called. What it was called though? Metal Alchemist. No oh, wait. Yeah, Full Metal Alchemist. That Alchemist. was one. That was one that was pretty popular and that was super right. fantasy. Just yeah, I guess there's like Al yeah, Alchemy is kind of yeah. I guess it's yeah. Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's that's also one of my favorites for sure. You know, I watched Full Metal Alchemist. Uh, when it came out, you know, I read the manga, and then when Brotherhood came out, then I just rewatched it again, and yeah, that's 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 a good one. Well, it, it shows in your game. So guys, check out his game on Steam now. You can wishlist it. Ario, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. One more time, tell people where they can go to find out more information about your game. Right, so you can go ahead and wishlist the game on Steam. Uh, uh, Potionomics, just search for it. Otherwise, we also put tons of goodies on Twitter and on TikTok. So please also, if you check out stuff there, if you want to see more content from the game.